It's like I think he actually filmed Kigassia at uh, Nevada or something. So I don't think uh, that should count. Mm. But uh, Angry Video Game Nerd's been getting kind of lazy with his work. He doesn't seem to be as motivated as he once was. Nope, in fact, he's just dragging the shit on like a long pair of saggy balls. Hmm. Well, the <laughs> To me, the angry video game nerd has never been funny. I mean, I've seen a, some of his videos, and he just does not come off as well humorous. His Metal Gear review was tasteless. Well, I can't remember when I stopped uh, caring about a uh, uh, angry video game nerd. I guess it's somewhere around um, either 2010 or 2011. I stopped caring. I don't know. Let's just say it's been a long time. So. But. One person that I do get, I still watch, but he does at times will piss me off. Confuse Matthews. Don't say. Oh, I thought you were gonna say I. I read your gamer for a second. <laughs> uh, Confuse Matthew. I do like his work, but um, sometimes his fans can get a little bit too. Um, they usually take quotes from uh, him, and they would actually try to use it against other people um, when it comes to opinions on certain movies. But so, like for example, there's this uh, troll out there named the Decoration, or the De Declaration. Sorry, I suck at grammar. Um, he actually uh, went around uh, other YouTubers who are fans of anime, mostly from Studio Ghibli, and he kept saying, and he actually uses quotes from Confused Matthews' review of Fear to the Way, just to just to back up his fucking argument. I cannot watch Confused Matthews' Fear to the Way review. That would well, just well, Matthew me. will admit. Uh, much later that uh, he even said that his review wasn't really as good and he actually said that most anime are pretty much like I pretty much random and all this other bullshit um, that was actually not right of me it's in his uh, mini view of uh, The Last Airbender yeah I did love his uh, Dragon Ball Evolution review oh shit yeah I was like bash it bash it bash it yes he bashed Dragon Ball. I, I think XM needs to do his own review of Dragon Ball Evolution. Maybe I should do a review of Dragon Ball Evolution as well. I, I already did my. I, I, I already did my thing on Dragon Ball Evolution. It's pretty funny. Uh, I did. A... I also did a video on a, which is an unscripted rant on Dragon Ball Evolution, but I didn't really think it was that good, despite that I still kept it uploaded onto my channel. You know, as me, as a stuttering motherfucker, I am. So I think I may actually um, decide to do a review. It. Um, it's going to take a long time, though. I did a um, comparison okay. video between a Sailor Moon fan-made film and Dragon Ball Evolution. Sailor Moon, the fan-made film, one. <laughs> God, the Kamehameha Hot doesn't heal me. Fan film actually is actually more accurate than a major motion uh, movie studio could ever do. Wait, are you talking about Dragon Ball The Magic Begins? No, I actually... I thought you were talking about Dragon Ball Evolution. Oh, no, I'm talking about... Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about, Dragon Ball Evolution. That's the one I'm talking about when I did the comparison of Sailor Moon, the fan-made movie. There's yeah. also another Dragon Ball film called Yeah, Dragon I am aware of that. The Kamehameha doesn't heal people, Pete. Heal people. <laughs> uh, that just reminds me <laughs> of America, past video. Don't fight boys, but you can always fight super villains. <laughs> didn't Happy Gear Free up, doesn't heal do a video? Did, didn't Happy Gear Free do, do a video on the on the yeah. Dragon Ball Evolution? Or, oh yeah, oh, yeah, um, I, I, oh, yeah I, I, I it, it, It's the for Roshi oh. is attempting to do a Kamehameha or some kind of key uh, healing power, and, and then it blows it's just, up. Yeah, it's like it's like a nuke. It, it goes up, and it, mushroom cloud comes out of nowhere. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, I can imagine Chao Yun Fat trying to heal Goku with the Kamehameha of healing, but instead he actually blew up Goku's face. It's like, oh well, movie over. Credit. <laughs> <laughs> Something yeah, the, the whole Kamehameha right? thing in uh, DBE was actually completely. Um, I, I, what's the word I'm looking Pointless. for? Pointless. Uh, what? Pointless. No, not pointless. Um, I'm pretty sure it'll come back to me. Inconsistent. No, that's it. Inconsistent. 
But I said before, I'll say again, if people want a good live-action Dragon Ball film, just watch Dragon Ball The Magic Begins. Corny as hell, but you know, it's, it's fun to watch. Yeah, or just wait for the fan, fi the British fan film. That's going to be awesome. Are you talking about the Dragon Ball Z? Yeah, the one being made by that small British film company. Oh, yeah, because I've seen some of their, 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 uh, their videos where they're giving updates and saying they're showing a test footage of Yamcha and special effects and stuff like that. It looks interesting. Sure, yeah, it might be a low budgeted, but at least it's better. It'll be better scripted, better. Ah, let's just say it's going to be better. Hmm. And thanks to Dragon Ball Evolution, Doug and Team Fortor don't mix well together. <laughs> yeah, thanks to Rift Tracks. I have not seen the Rift Tracks version yet. Oh, Danny tried posting it the other day, but Fox kind of blocked it worldwide. Yeah. And it had to link, uh, and it had to link to the full Rift Tracks, too. Uh, I've seen the Team Four Star Rift Tracks of uh, the Evolution. So it, it's pretty it? funny. Yeah, so I've seen it. Did you pay for it? No comment. <laughs> No, I, I, legally I, I, see that you gotta pay for it. No, it's like if you if you go online, you, you can you can find the Retrax films anywhere. Just download them and in the sense of the film and the audio track. Because with the Retrax, if you were to actually buy them, it's only the the uh, audio track. So you you'd have to own the actual film and sync it up. Me, I, I could never buy Dragon Ball Evolution just to watch the commentary. So I download the film, watch it, and delete it. Actually, I'm a little surprised Doug hasn't done a review of uh, Fist of the North Star, the live action film, and started praising that. <laughs> Fist of the North Star, the live action movie, is awesome! Wait, th th there's a, a Fist of the North Star, a live action film? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Fist of the North Star is awesome. The live action film's absolute crap. I don't I'm not talking about live action, I'm talking about the streamlined dub, the old English dub of the mm. anime movie. I don't know if I had to watch the English dub of that one, I'd have to watch it subbed. Yeah. I, I uh, the English dub of it was pretty good. In fact I like the the first English dub of Vampire Hunter D. Mm. I, when it comes to dubbing I prefer when it's, um when it's the newer dubs over the older stuff just because they are they're yeah. actually they know what they're doing now. Back in the days, they really didn't. I could argue with uh, some of the earlier dubs of Studio Ghibli films uh, with Disney. Hmm. Even then, uh, even then, the 1998 dub of Kiki's Delivery Service wasn't really that good. Um, in comparison to the later dubs of Studio Ghibli films. But I still watch it, though. Uh, I still watch uh, the movie. It's still my favorite. Hmm. Surprising enough, I that's one of the, I didn't really care that much for Kiki's Delivery Service. You don't like Kiki's Delivery Service? That's it. I'm going to sign off from this podcast. I've never seen Kiki's Delivery Service. I've, I've only seen it. commercials for it. I've never. I, I watched it. I just couldn't get. I just. I don't know. I didn't really care for it that much. I thought that. I don't know what it was. But I just didn't really care for it. But the I only did, anime I did get really get into, but that was that was done by the same style as. Spirit Away and Kiki and Castle of the Sky was Princess Mine and Okay. That was the only thing I could ever really get into that well. My favorite is uh, my favorite Spirited Away. That's my favorite Studio Ghibli film. I I, I didn't really like Spirited Away. I I liked Princess Mine and Okay better. Um, I did like Secret World of Arietti. That was a good one. I've never even heard of Spirited Away. What about Ponyo though? Ponyo? I haven't seen Ponyo yet. Oh, the stall uh, critic. A good movie. Well, to me, it is a good movie. I need to watch it sometime. That's one. That's actually one I'm hesitant to watching of all the Studio Ghibli films. Like that one's the one I've been most hesitant to watch. However, I actually got really pissed about Tales of Mercy. That was horrible. Oh yeah, that movie sucked balls. Uh, 
if it's anything I would rather watch over Tales from Earthsea, it's Naruto. I would rather watch Naruto over Tales from Earthsea. Uh, I saw Tangled. That was that's funny because it was um two. I saw that and Tangled in the same week, and Tangled I really enjoyed. That was actually surprisingly good. Yeah. But Tales of Earthsea, I was like, what the fuck happened here? That's probably another movie I may actually review, um, if I get to reviewing, that is. Because there's so many problems with that fucking thing. That's what, I love the scene at the end where he goes, I'm gonna go, I have to go turn myself into my kingdom. It's like, dude, you're gonna get, they may kill you. You're never gonna yeah, see really. daylight again after for killing the king. I mean, what's he actually, I mean, what's he gonna do? It's like, What's he expects uh, when he actually returns? People are going to throw him a party or something? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I thought the movie was so poorly executed. Excuse me, I had to go away for a while. What are you, what are you guys talking about? Tales from Earthsea. Uh, the uh, worst the Studio worst. Ghibli film of all time. Hey, what hey, studio what? did uh, Little uh, Nemo? I think it was TMS. I'm talking about the one who did the anime, Little Nemo. The one that Nostalgia Greg reviewed. Yeah, yeah. I actually saw that review where uh, uh, the, the most humorous part is that, well, in my personal opinion, that like that uh, critic pointed out was that the little uh, the little uh, Nemo, the, the kid in the dream world, the king appointed some of the, the responsibility from the dude, and then seconds after he, he's been, I don't know if this is before or after. That he was appointed to that responsibility, whatever it was. The kid breaks it. <laughs> he fails. And, and and then the big party. I think, I think a big party comes around. You know where the king is uh, acknowledging Neo. You know, and uh, he, the kid looks like, okay, I screwed it up. How do I? I can't tell them. And this kid is supposed to save the the world, the, the dream world. Yeah. Oh, from yeah. the from evil the... nightmare that he released. Oh, oh yeah, oh, th that's it. Cause it uh, yeah. he, he was just to make sure that the nightmare wasn't wasn't supposed to be released, and he accidentally releases him because of that big short fat guy told him to open it. Oh yeah, the, 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 the little green midget looking character that has got a cigar. And yeah, voice by yeah. Mickey Rooney. Really... And the funny part about it is, after um, King was taken away, they were gonna like put his ass in the in, like in the cannon and shoot him off to some godforsaken place. That's what I would like to do to Jar Jar Binks. Just shoot him off in a cannon. Uh, the Star Wars prequels, a sin. <laughs> Those are a fucking sin. Three was all right. Three was a sin too. <laughs> no. Hey, I'd rather watch the Star Wars prequels than Tales from Mercy. I'll take Tales from Mercy because it's one film. Those are three movies with Hayden Christensen. Uh I I could have swore that Hayden Christensen was actually in uh, two of the Star Wars prequels. Yeah, he was in the he was in episode two and three, and then they decide, and then they they had the fucking kid um, from Jingle All the Way in episode one. Well, I, 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 I would rather go with Hayden Christensen than Jake Lloyd. Cannot stand the kid. But Sarah than Macaulay Culkin. I I've said it before, and I'll say it again: Carl Urban oh. should have been Anakin. He would have been perfect. So as the child or grown-up? As the, uh, gr the teen and grown-up. He, he was the perfect age. Carlin was in the right age at that time to do those roles. Hmm. Well, I've never heard him, but I'll him up. Because I look at two reviews for Star Wars, and it's just like they, they put the prequels perfectly. They review the per um uh. Confused Matthews, who did a great job with the Star Wars prequels, and Red Letter Media. I watched both of those reviews, and they were funny as hell. They were more entertaining than the Star Wars prequels themselves. 
Yep. Uh, Storm Sink's reviews were crap. I've never seen any 